This is El Callao, a Peruvian seaport built by the Spanish in the 16th century. For 400 years, it has been the most important seaport in Peru. In 1849, the first group of Chinese laborers to arrive in Peru landed here. In the markets in El Callao, there's a very popular pork bun, chicharron. Legend has it that it was passed down from over a century ago by the Chinese who were sold here as bonded laborers. It looks like Cantonese roast pork in a bun. Many of the vendors of these buns are the descendants of the Chinese laborers who came from Hoiping in Canton. Here, they transplant rice seedlings the same way they do in China. There are many Chinese vegetables in their markets. They use soy sauce for frying vegetables. Their main staples are rice and fries. There are almost 4,000 Chinese restaurants in the capital, Lima. It's among the highest concentration in the world. Just from the food and the agriculture of this country, you can see the far-reaching influence of the Chinese. In the center of El Callao, there's a stele that commemorates the Chinese contribution to Peru. In October of 1849, 75 Chinese laborers arrived at El Callao by sea. In the following 25 years, about 100,000 Chinese were sold as bonded laborers to work in Peru. Most of the Chinese laborers worked as coolies in the farms. Some worked in mines and some built railroads. About 10,000 of them were sent to dig bird droppings. Beilu in 1829 Along the coast of central Peru, there are many islands. Ballestas is one of the tourist attractions. The Chinese there called it Bird Dropping Island. Today, it's a popular spot for watching marine animals. In the past, it was where many Chinese laborers lost their lives. This was the habitat for thousands of seabirds. Over the centuries, bird droppings had accumulated to a thickness of a few meters. In the middle of the 19th century, the bird droppings were Europe's most important fertilizer for agriculture. The foreign exchange earned from the export of the bird droppings accounted for 80% of Peru's national income at the time. At first, it was Peruvian prisoners who were digging bird droppings. As the number of Chinese laborers increased, they provided most of the labor. Here, the sun is baking hot and it never rains. In stifling heat, high humidity and overwhelming stench, Chinese laborers had to work at least 12 hours a day digging tons of bird droppings. 
。喺島上面做嘢有個好嚴重嘅問題，就係、是、濕。海鳥同埋鳥糞上面有好多濕，搞到華工身上全部都係濕。好多人都有皮膚病，而且鳥糞入邊有一種塵，呢種塵係酸性嘅，吸咗入去之後，肺部會被燒傷，接觸到眼就會被整盲，所以當時好多華工都盲咗。With endless physical agony, many fell ill from exhaustion and died in misery. From 1852 to 1854, in a matter of three years, over 60 of them jumped off the cliff because they couldn't bear the hellish environment anymore. The 80,000 or more sold as coolies on plantations didn't fare much better either. At night, they were locked up in straw sheds with dozens of them huddling together. They had to start working at four in the morning. Some Chinese laborers tried to escape. After they were caught, they were fettered. The fetters wouldn't be taken off even when they were working during the day. Some stayed fettered for years, the longest for 19 years. One third of the Chinese laborers couldn't survive their eight-year contracts. The hardship put them in their early graves before they could gain freedom. A Peruvian realist poet, Juan de Arona, wrote this poem about the Chinese of that time. Somebody 我哋而家知道华人嘅遭遇，都系多得嗰啲去当地旅游嘅人，包括英国人、美国人、德国人同埋法国人。佢哋将所见所闻写低，翻到欧洲或者美国之后就公诸于世，令当权者知道华人嘅惨况。Under international pressure, the Peruvian government ended the import of Chinese laborers in 1856. However, unable to stand up to the objection of the plantation owners, in 1861 the government repealed the ban. The truth is, even during the ban, Peru never stopped importing Chinese laborers. In a foreign land, the Chinese laborers worked on the farm every day, living the lives of slaves. What they gave of themselves helped the plantations in Peru to continue to expand, spreading far and wide.
November 1st is the Qingming Festival in Peru. At this time every year, Junking Leung comes to this cemetery to offer flowers to the Chinese who had passed away and to update their records. Chen King Leung came to Peru from Zhongshan in 1977 to be reunited with his father, and ever since has been following his father's instructions to take care of things at this cemetery. Bilu 就装了个一边,好,生完多多少少都好,生完就有啲就帮佢打工个食边,好,自己啲食边咁叫一份食嚟嘅。As early as 1849, Chinese laborers were already in Peru. After surviving the eight-year contract, some would go to the city from the countryside to work or start a small business. Once they were set up, they would apply for their poor relatives to immigrate to Peru. At the time, many were living a communal life. <laughs> As many of the Chinese had planted vegetables back home, when they came to Peru, they naturally went to work on vegetable farms. 很多來到不識說不識話,因為他種菜不是說話,種菜就種菜 in the 1920s, the Chinese began to play an important role in Peruvian agriculture. They brought Chinese vegetables and the skill of growing them to Peru. By 1949, 25% of the Chinese there were in farming. 60% were in business. The farms in the northern part of Peru were 90% owned by Chinese at the time. Among the owners of thousands of acres of fertile fields, Benjamin Lao and Teichan Hoi were the most prominent. Jose Lau is Benjamin Lau's grandson. His grandfather's farm was in the northern city of Pacasmayo. It covered a large area. Other than farm fields, there were forests and rivers. They mainly grew rice, corn, and cotton. 
。爸爸成日都话爷爷嘅生意好大，系慢慢成长起嚟嘅。佢由中国嚟嘅时候，身上面得好少钱，佢嘅财富都系慢慢累积翻嚟嘅。Benjamin Lau was from Zhongshan. He came to make a living in Peru in 1905. Having been a cook and a grocery store owner, he accumulated some wealth. He liked farming. In 1927, he invested in a farm in the north called Tecapa. He obtained some of the land. This is a Zhang Yuping land. The size of it is 系有六千六百四十九公顷。我爸爸有三成股份。呢度嘅土地有啲可以种田，有啲就系道路，有啲地方系有水嘅，就可以种水稻。加加埋埋就有成千一公顷。Benjamin Lau's wife is Peruvian. Her name is Luz Mila. Hanging on the gate of their plantation are the capital letters LB. At the time, running a farm was very profitable. Benjamin's farm hired 300 farmers. Other than growing crops, they also reared a few thousand heads of cattle and sheep. 净系牛都有三个品种，奶牛系用嚟出产牛奶，牛肉就运去街市度卖。呢盘生意大概做咗两三年，之后就再喺山上度养羊。我爸爸嘅个性好刚强，当时秘鲁政府恰啲中国人，律师就建议佢入秘鲁籍。但系佢话：我永远都唔会改国籍。虽然我同秘鲁嘅女人结咗婚，生咗十个仔女，但系我永远都系中国人。Tay Chun Hoi was another self-made man. He became the owner of a huge plantation in the north. Northern Peru is dry and often in drought. You couldn't expect a good harvest if you grew crops here. Peru, its farmland and the landscape, it is not a plain, a barren desert. It is not a desert. It is a little bit lower than the plain. 你要全部產平佢咧，工程量太大啦，傾家蕩產都搞唔掂。咁唯有咧，根據地形造成一種大型嘅梯田，大面積嘅梯田。Tay Chun Hoi divided the farmland into a few large sections. The slight difference in the height of each terrace meant he could dispense with an enormous earth-moving project. He also invented a level and curved channel for diverting water. It allowed the water to flow in naturally for irrigation. Tejun Hoi also promoted this skill to other farms. It solved the problem of water shortage in northern Peru. He also improved crop growing methods and introduced machines into farming. This accelerated the mechanization of Peru's agriculture. In the 60s, the government called for the development of forests, 
Taichung Hoi was the first to respond. He opened up forests for farmland. He built roads and bridges for traffic to the outside world. Because of his contributions, in 1968, the Peruvian government decided to present a medal to him for his outstanding service to agriculture. But before the award was given out, there was a military coup that same year. The civilian government was overthrown. Tai Chun Hoi was the first Chinese to be given the medal. When the regime changed hands, whoever came to power knew the Chinese had turned the dry land in the north into fertile fields and granaries. In the past, Peru relied on imported rice. Only the rich could afford it. But the large-scale cultivation of rice by the Chinese had made it possible for ordinary families to eat rice. Rice became the main staple of the Peruvians. This is Chiclayo, a city in northern Peru. Walking into this market is like going back to Hong Kong. All the vegetables sold here are familiar to us. Balsamina, fuca. Este es ajo chino o cauchoy. Allá tenemos pak choy. Sikua. Kaichoy. Kaichoy para hacer ham choy. Virginia is second-generation Chinese born in Peru. Influenced by her father, she has loved visiting markets since she was a child. The early Chinese laborers who came here to be coolies brought with them Chinese cooking ingredients. Lady Peruvians' main staples used to be bread, potato, and corn. Now they have rice almost every day. They had no idea what soy sauce was. Now nine out of ten families have it. Traditionally, Peruvians stewed or fried their food. Now they know what is meant by wok hay. In the 1950s, Chinese cuisine became very popular in Peru. More and more Chinese restaurants appeared. Many 
除咗秘鲁菜之外，秘鲁人嘅第一选择就系中餐，黐花。第二选择就系烧鸡，但系烧鸡都用咗中国元素喺入边，因为用咗豉油。Virginia is a cooking teacher. Of the six children, she's the only one who inherited her father's talent for cooking. Hello, Mama. You're here. They're here. They're here. Virginia's father came to Peru from Zhongshan in 1935. In the 50s, he ran two grocery stores and a Chinese restaurant. Then, seeing how popular Chinese cuisine was, he turned his grocery store into a restaurant. Her father died seven years ago. I really like to go to the street. He taught me how to cook fish and cook fish. I really like to go to the street with him. Cacao,吃麦,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,吃饭,
。政府充公我哋土地嗰阵，正系我哋庄园最鼎盛嘅时候。我哋用咗现代化嘅技术去耕种，农作物生长得好好，庄园发展得好顺利。我觉得政府咁样掠夺我哋土地，系唔遵守法律。喺今时今日，呢啲嘢系冇可能发生嘅。当时好多人都向银行借咗钱，国有化对佢哋嘅影响好大。政府到而家一分钱都冇赔过俾我哋。Luckily, by that time, Benjamin Lau had already divided up some of his land among his sons. Land that was less than 300 hectares was spared, so the Lau family was able to keep a small plantation. As for the other Chinese, Tai Chan Hui, his 1,000 hectare plantation was taken by the government. At the time, he had just promised to donate money to build a school. Well, no, it's hard, no, it's hard, but it's hard. 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 咁樣人哋通知係土改，如果通知你土改，我就唔送，我就走噶啦。但係我爸爸唔係，即係知通知,知道咗土改，仍然仍然堅信個諾言啊！即係佢已經土人點講啊？講過有有個諾言，咁要要遵守諾言。同時佢同嗰啲人講，佢話我走咗，你呢間學校冇噶啦，冇人捐俾你噶啦。咁、嗯、樣所以佢話我雖然係土改，佢一樣咁樣捐間學校出嚟。Other than building a school, Tai Chan Hoi also donated a large quantity of supplies to three hospitals in Peru. For the great earthquake in central Peru in the 70s, he also contributed money for disaster relief. Benjamin Lau was also a generous donor to schools in Peru. Today, in the Peruvian Chinese community, the two men still command the most respect. The Tungsing Temple is in Lima's Chinatown. It was established during the reign of Guangxu in the Qing Dynasty. Over the past 100 odd years, it has been a very popular place for worship. When the early Chinese immigrants arrived in Peru, other than seeds, farming, and cooking skills, they also brought their beliefs. As the Chinese slowly put down roots in Peru, Guanggong, Lord Guan, became accepted by more and more local people. In 1895, Chinese living in the northern city of Nepenya brought Guanggong out in a parade. The turnout was so massive that the Catholic Church in Lima had to step in to prevent the Chinese Guanggong from becoming the spiritual support of the Peruvians. Donde的神父向利马天主教总教区投诉话，唔可以接受华人将关公当作圣人，因为咁样会欺骗啲秘鲁人，令佢哋产生混淆，以为关公就系耶稣。呢个神父要求总教区派全教士落嚟处理。Isabel is an anthropologist who specializes in studying the history of the Peruvian Chinese immigrants. She has discovered that by the end of the 19th century, Guanggong had become an important god in Peru. The local people had him confused with Catholic saints. They called him Saint Agong. If you go to the temple, you will see that there are Christians, 
，呢种情形维持咗一段好长嘅时间。你亦都会见到关帝着住嗰件袍上面有天主教嘅谢恩奉献物，咁即系话系有秘鲁人嚟向关公祈福噶。As time passed, Guanggong temples are no longer as packed with worshippers as before. People tend to follow the customs of their adopted country. Most of the new generation of Chinese are Catholics, but in front of this statue of Jesus, in keeping with Chinese tradition, they're accustomed to offering incense. 喺They don't speak Chinese. They look less and less Chinese, but they still keep in mind that their ancestors had come from distant China. This unique group is called local-born. This is Wen Yi. Not a goat, not a sheep, but a goat. 如果唔用雲耳，係可以用蘑菇或者中國冬菇嚟代替嘅。Virginia is local born. With a pair of skilled hands, she has made herself into the teacher of a famous cooking school. Occasionally, she appears on TV to teach the best of Chinese and Peruvian cuisines. Today, she is teaching her students a Peruvian dish known in every household: lomo saltado, Chinese-style beefsteak. 要整老母沙拉度中式牛柳呢个菜式，我哋要用秘鲁同中国嘅配料，仲要用镬，好高温咁去炒，同埋要用豉油。不如先讲下秘鲁嘅庄园以前发生过咩事啊？华人喺嗰度做嘢，秘鲁人食咗牛最好嘅部分，剩翻落嚟嗰啲华工先拎去煮。佢哋将呢啲牛肉同洋葱、番茄咁混合埋啲中国嘅配料一齐炒。炒嘅时候咧，一定要落豉油。如果唔落咧，你就做唔到呢道菜噶啦，味道会唔一样。最后仲要加啲秘鲁嘅 pisco 酒，所以呢个菜式系中国秘鲁嘅各式配料加埋豉油嘅混合体。薯条系秘鲁嘅本土食物，所以啲华工就做咗个融合嘅菜式，以薯条代替白饭做配饭。呢、这个真系一个新嘅发明。呢度大部分菜式最后都要跟白饭嘅，呢、这个好明显就系中国嘅影响啦。所有菜式都要跟饭。This is the only Peruvian dish that is fried in a wok. Before the 20th century, in Peruvian recipes, you couldn't find lomo saltado. It was first written about in 1925. This dish has encapsulated the history of Chinese immigrants in Peru. It also represents the characteristics of local-born. 爸爸嚟到秘鲁嘅时候，我仲未出世。但我觉得你嚟到一个陌生嘅国家，咩都唔识，你点都要入乡随俗，改变下自己。但我爸爸从来唔会因为咁就放弃自己嘅中国传统，佢亦都教导我哋要保留中国嘅传统同埋习俗。如果以出生嘅地方嚟讲，我系秘鲁人；但如果以文化对我嘅影响嚟讲，我一半半啦，一半系中国人，一半系秘鲁人。Jose Lau is also local-born. 
He is particularly proud of this identity. He admires his grandfather for coming empty-handed from Zhongshan to make a living here and eventually becoming the owner of one of the largest Chinese plantations in Peru. Because of his grandfather, he is fascinated by China. When he was in university, Jose never missed any chance to make friends with Chinese. Whenever a new Chinese restaurant opened, he would go there to eat. He wanted to be closer to China. He made a point of meeting Chinese girls. In the end, his wish came true. He married a Chinese girl. Jose is always on the lookout for news about China. The news always excites him inexplicably. Fifteen years ago, friends from Zhongshan brought Jose some long arms. He liked them a lot and he saved the seeds for planting. Today, the Long'an trees from his home country are growing all over his plantation. This Chinese seed adapted very well to the Peruvian soil, just like the Chinese who came from afar and eventually found a home for themselves.